that 18 months, I closed sales for a million dollars. Within a year, I started managing a team of 10 people. In September 2019, I was nominated to be the sales closer of the year. And the 6,500 people across 151 countries, I came number one. one. Wow. I did my bachelor's in business administration. Yeah. Majored in business computer. Yeah. Then I went to Australia for my master's in IT. Okay, Australia where? Gold Coast. Yeah, I got a scholarship there. So I went there, I studied there, did my master's for a year. And after I completed my master's, I came back to Bangkok. Yeah. And I worked here for about a year and a half, two years. And then I moved uh, back to Australia because I got a permanent residence. Ah. Yeah. So in the period before I moved, 1997, right? So I finished my bachelor's in 96. No, sorry. I started in 96. I finished in 2000. So around 97, there was a there was a crisis, financial yes, crisis. Yes, yes, yes. Kung Kung financial crisis, right? So that what happened is at that point of time, the the whole business sort of came down a lot in the entire yes. bank. So even the family business was impacted. Ah. So based on that, I always had this in my mind. I was still quite dependent on my parents. So by the time I finished my bachelor's, I applied for a master's in Australia, and I. I got scholarship. I'm like, okay, let me go there. Yeah. With, with the aim of actually venturing into Australia to see, hey, maybe there's a different future there. Mm -hmm. So I went there, but uh, I did not stay on. I finished my master's in 2001. I applied for PR at that permanent residence mm -hmm. in Australia, uh, just because everybody was, was applying, so I'm like, yeah. I also applied. Please. And then, do you know Michelin? The, of yeah, I wrote the inventory system for them as well. Wow. So, so a real a, a tire that is fit on the on the car, yeah. you can trace it back all the way to the raw material. No. Yeah. Wow. Was this you as a freelance? No, no, no. I was, I was part of a company. Yeah. I was working in a job in Thailand at that point of time. Right? And I also wrote my first AI program that time, in the year 2003. Wow. So the AI program at that time, because the, the, the thing in Thailand is, it's great technology, people are like, you know, people labor, I see. but the English is not as great. I know. Yeah, so I wrote a program that traversed the entire o uh, Ocea Oceanic and oh. Asia Pacific website and checked the English grammar and language. So it went through every link, every page, Damn. every site. Can I plug some that to my site now? <laughs> And it actually showed all the spelling mistakes and showed all the grammatical mistakes and then someone just went in and really fixed it. So that was my first AI program yeah. in 2003. Yeah, that's great. And then, uh, by then I was like, you know what, I've got my former residence now and I'm still quite dependent on my parents, you know, and the business was sort of uh, not, not as great in Bangkok at that time. And my parents had moved so to Australia. What year are we talking about now? 97? This is, this is 2000, 2003. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so I came back from Masters in 2001. I worked from 2001 to 2005. Between 2001 and 2005, I was working in, in Thailand. Mm -hmm. All IT, all programming? Everything IT, yeah. everything programming. So parents moved up to Chiang Mai at that point of time. They started a business here. And I was like, okay, I'm going to Australia. So in 2006, June, I went to Australia. Okay. With the aim of I want to actually uh, stand up on my own feet. Yeah. And then eventually give back to my family. How and old were you by then? 27. Yeah. So June 2006, I moved. And uh, with the aim of actually being able to give back to my parents. Right. And I stayed there two years, didn't come back consecutively two years. And I remember when I was really young. And doing what? What were you doing? IT then? programming. Yeah. So I was working in a company called, so I arrived in Australia, no job, nothing. I just landed there. Yeah. And I found myself a job in three weeks. So in three weeks, I worked as a, in a company. It was a wealth management company. Ah, that's yeah. where it started. Yeah, a wealth management company. And this, this company is one of the oldest companies in Australia. At that point of time, it was 122 years old. Oh, wow. In 2006. So do the math now, right? Yeah. So it's fairly, fairly old. And I was in charge of actually writing the financial website for when investors and advisors logged in to check their finances. Mm. I started from that. So I really started right at the bottom, right at programming, writing code. So was this when you began to have, because you did get an ABAC, so obviously you had some interest in business, right? So, so ABAC, I did business now, bachelor's, then, right? Yeah. But then I, I had this view that IT cannot be left alone. So I, I majored in what, business, what be like IT, IT, in, information yeah. technology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I said, that's going to be growing very fast in, in the world at that time. So I did a major in business computer. So I did business administration plus IT yeah. together, right? And uh, No, I'm just thinking because you did a lot of work in IT. 
So this is when you finally began to work for the first time back with a bit of financial stuff, right? When you're doing the program. But you are still in IT. It's still in IT. It's yeah. still in yeah. IT. Yeah. So I did, I did pretty well in, in my uni. My GPA was 3.6 when I was there. I got a scholarship for my master's. I landed myself a job in Australia. Mm -hmm. But I always, I love interacting with people. Mm -hmm. like, so programming was there, but I enjoyed working with people. So very soon, within a year, I started managing a team of 10 people. Mm -hmm. So I got promoted. I, I handled the projects uh, in the company. Yeah, it was a wealth management company. I stayed in that company for seven years, seven and a half years. By the time I left, I was managing the entire web development team. So put it in perspective, the systems that I was managing yeah. was managing funds worth $43 billion, yeah. Australian dollars. So if a system went down, 43, 43 billion Australian yeah. dollars, right? Funds under management. Yeah. I was under my direct control. Now, if the systems went down, for every hour it went down, there were 60 admin people working. So for every hour the system went down, we were losing 60 man hours. There were how many people working for every hour went down? 60. 60. Six zero. Yeah. So nobody could invest in the company, nobody could withdraw their funds, nothing would happen, right? So what I learned from that is how do you work under pressure? And that skill helped me a lot. Managing a team, working under pressure, yeah. dealing with people, uh, working through conflicts, you know, when stakeholders, when senior management come and says, what's going on? Yeah. How do you manage that emotion? I think that was a very big part of the learning. So tell me, yeah. what, what did you learn? How do you manage those emotions? So I think the emotions, it's, it's never someone's fault. It's actually, if you look at, if you take the fault away from the person and you look at, at it from a third person and see what was the process that went wrong? Can I fix the process, right? Before you blame someone, you look at it first, what could I have done better? Was my instructions clear enough as a leader, mm -hmm. right? Was, did someone actually make an assumption which was not correct? I look at those things first, right. and then I fix, oh, that was an assumption. And then we fix that assumption, I fix the process, and then we sort of look at the person and say, okay, are you now clear? If the, if the process is clear, if the assumption is no yeah. longer there, if the instructions is clear, and if, if it's then the person's fault, then we how can I actually bring up that person? Is it the skill training? Is it a mindset training? You are the right person in the right role. So when you're working in this, in this big old yeah. giant company uh, yeah. with all your responsibilities, and you're talking about how you dealt well with under pressure, so yeah. tell me a little bit about, you know, did, did stuff this go down? Did you face those problems? <laughs> Yeah, so I, I tell you an incident in 2008. Mm -hmm. So remember the global financial crisis? Of course I remember yeah, yeah. So in, in February, I got promoted. The global financial crisis happened in the month of November. So from February till November, you know the system I was talking to you about that yeah. manages $43 billion. Yeah. That was the time I got promoted to look after that system uh. in February. And I knew nothing about that system. Apart from how it was built. I didn't even know how it was built. Oh. So I got hand I got told to manage that system. The thing that I was good at is managing people and looking at how do I allocate tasks and making sure the outcome was fixed. So based on that, I was able to handle that. But at times used to come, right? When, when there's under pressure. Yeah. So for six months straight when I took on that role, I was in the office at 7.30 in the morning and I was leaving around maybe 9.30, 10 for six months straight. That's not healthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but it was for six months straight. Yeah, and until the crash. Yeah, until the crash. Then what happened? I got promoted again. How? Because during that six, uh, from February till November, there was so much under pressure, the systems had just, we had just rolled over a new system. And that was the biggest overhaul in IT that the company had ever done in 122 years of existence. Mm. Now putting something in an IT, things would crash for sure, right? Yes. So how I managed the team, made sure all the bugs were fixed in time, processing was happening in time, and when it came in November, now people were being laid off. They were consolidating teams, right? Based on that, they consolidated the web development team and my team, they consolidated it, and they made me the manager. So there were times, there were really tough times where where you you feel that, hey, I could have done better, this is my fault, this is your fault. Mm -hmm. uh, you take on the hit a lot, you know, when things go wrong. Yeah, so um, you, you basically inherited a platform, yes. which you then superimposed on top of it, or were you just fixing the whole platform? We were fixing, there was a brand new platform that went in. Yeah, right, so it was a, a new... However, the management of the issues of that platform. But the platform itself, you didn't 
didn't build. No, the team that was the, there the built. Team, the, team the team that built it, yes. So I took over a team that had already built that platform, but it wasn't functioning because of all the issues, right? There was like, I think there was about maybe 70 to 80 issues a day. So how do you even, I mean, if you know, someone, a big client wants to take some money out and the site's down, I mean, do they have like a mirror site somewhere? I mean, how would you? So the, the, there was an old system running in parallel for a right. couple of months, but it, it, it wasn't as smooth up front. We're talking about $43 billion, right? So we can't just cut over. At the same time, when you put in a brand new system, a system that's, are you familiar with the program called COBOL? No. <laughs> that's like 50 years old program, like literally. It was written in that. Wow. And now you're actually coming into the latest technology. So there's definitely something's going to break. Yeah, something's definitely going to break. So that's what happened. Lots of pressure, lots of uh, blame game, you know, lots of politics, lots of, uh, even if it's not your fault, sometimes you have to take it as your fault just purely because of, you know, the situation you're in, the management position you're in. So those were the pressures that, you know, you, you handle. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's really celebrating the team. Mm. So how did you flip from pure IT to the, the, the wealth side? So it was every system was all finance related to wealth. So was this when were you yourself? Dab I'm just trying to get your personal yeah. story here. Like, did you begin to dabble in the wealth side? Did you begin to study it or did you just absorb yeah, yeah. it? Like, so what happened? Like and so I was there for seven and a half years, right? All in IT programming. Okay. Yeah. All of a sudden I was doing really well. Yeah. In 2012, the entire IT got outsourced. Oh. So what happened then, because of cost cutting and all that yeah. stuff, right? What happened is I lost my job. Yeah. I got retrenched. And that was the first time that I felt I didn't have control. And that put me into a moment that, so I was married by then. I didn't have a job for about a month and a half. And I was like, what do I do now? This is the first time in my life. I'm working really well, getting a great salary, doing some great work, but all of a sudden something happens and I lose control. Mm. So in 2013, after taking a bit of a month, month and a half of thinking, I got myself another job again in finance. This time in a company called Toyota Finance Australia. That's when I, I went in in a very similar position and looked after the entire IT side of things. Yeah. But something else changed. I said, now I'm gonna take control on my finances. So that was a real wake up call. For you. That was a wake up call for me, right? And by then I got married for two years as well. I'm like, now it's not me, it's my wife as well. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in this whole moment in time, I sort of celebrated my parents, you know, helped them, have, have bought them a car, made, let, you know, traveled overseas and all that stuff. But that moment was, now it's about me. Mm -hmm. You know, it was the first time I started thinking about me. And then I said, let me now look into how to create that. So I started looking at real estate, right? I started looking at real estate, I started looking at investments. Plus I was working now in a finance company where they're giving loans out for cars. Yeah. Uh -huh. So directly, related to you know mortgages loans and everything so i was like hey this is a good opportunity as i understanding the terminology of the the work i already got that from my previous job but it was sort of like just on the surface level yeah now in 2013 i was like let me look at real estate by 2015 i had, i was able to buy three properties in australia in australia, in australia. By what, 2015? 2015 so about two years into the job mm -hmm. i said let me buy a home for myself and then i got two other investment properties yeah so it was it was it was the wake up call, and then by I think by 2016, I got myself the fourth property. Damn! So it was really a wake up call, and I was like, no, I gotta do something. So I, I said, okay, this is really stable, and like you know, in a job at a higher position. So I had grown up a lot. So it was the CEO, the C suite, and then me in a in a company mm -hmm. called Toyota Finance. Yeah. So I was responsible for the IT applications, Australia wide. But at that time, you were also looking to buffer up your own personal security. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then comes along 2018. A few things happen. So as you know in corporate, every two, three years, senior management changes. And when it changes, all your relationship with the top, you got to rebuild everything again, right? Yeah. So 2018 came in, the, the whole CIO, the whole management changed. And the, and my role, one person got divided into five managers. So they hired five more people doing the same. So I was like, what just happened again? You know? And I was like, okay, let me, let me stick around. Let me see what this is. I think this is a new opportunity for me to sort of build up my skill to move higher and then what happened in 2018 
May 2018. Yeah. Right? So my dad was visiting me. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he was coming back to Australia in 2018. It was Thursday. I remember very clearly. It was a wow. Thursday, 2018 in May. You know? He came back to Thailand on Saturday, Friday. And on Saturday, he entered ICU. Why? His heart rate went from 80 to 190. Oh. So I was like, it was a whole like, you know. Yeah. Like a whole moment. Like what just happened? Yeah. And then moment flashed. I'm like, there's so much more to give back to family. And things are happening in my job. I was like, all of a sudden, I do have control, but I still don't have control on so many things. Such as? Like the job. Like the properties. Yeah, yeah. But, but the job stable was not there. The family situation was, was changing. So I flew back to Thailand and dad was in the ICU room, right? And in the ICU room, I'm like, you know what? I just hope life gives me a second chance. There's so much more to give back, you know? And I was like, I could have done a lot more things a lot more faster, you know? I'm not sure you could have, you know? And but, but it's just, all this was flashing in my head, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in that moment, in the ICU room, sitting at the footstep of the bed, right? So I'm like, I hope give dad a second chance. Give me a second chance to sort of uh, give back a little bit. You know, so uh, that's happy, alive, everything. I flew back in the month of June, 2018. That was a that was a big turning point. And then I, I told my wife, uh, her name is Preeti, right? And I said, Look, I saw that. P R W E T Y. P R W E T Y. Yeah. So I told her, you know what? If I stay in my job here, certain things like this happen. I am bound to the restrictions I get in the job. Although the property is there, but you're still bound to the freedom. The choices are not there. I want to give a lot more. So I said, I'm going to now transition out and build my own business. So now, how do I build my business and what do I do? I did not I did not know what to do, but all I knew is if you have your business and you cannot close a sale, you have no business. And if you can't get a customer, there's no... So I said, uh, I decided that I'm going to go and learn how to close sales. I said, that's the first skill I'm going to learn. I'm going to stick in my job with all the politics happening with everything. I'm just going to stick around. Because you've never done sales before. I've never done sales no. before. And what happened then in June, I enrolled into a sales program online, right? And I said, this is it, man. This is the program that will help me get this new skill. So I've always been IT programmer. By then I grew up into a management role, everything. But sales I've never done. So in June, now here the focus was very strong. The determination was very, the desire, the purpose, everything, right? It was beyond me now. From June 2018, for the next, I told, I told Preeti, I told my wife, give me 12 months, I will make it happen. We'll have some money on the side. I'll transition out of my job, we'll build a business. It took me 18 months. But in that 18 months, here's what happened. I was working in my job for 40 hours. Hours. Mm -hmm. On the side, in Australia, still. in Australia, still, I was working a job for forty hours. On the side, I was closing sales another fifty hours what, a week. What sales? Online on the phone. But what were you selling? I was for selling, your company. No, for someone else. But what were you selling? So there were a lot of uh, you know these coaches online. Yeah. People online they sell like, hey, I've got a program. Come learn from oh, me. Okay. They they are having leads coming in. Right, they're having leads coming in. So I was, I was on the phone, I was getting a lead and I was picking up the phone and I was closing a sale on the phone. So I ended up working for 18 months straight. I did this for real estate people as well. I did this for people selling other sales programs. I did this for people selling for interior designers and a lot of other programs online. They needed sales people remote. I said, give me the lead, I'll close the sale for you. So they were all online with online. leads and they would just throw it to you. And I would but you up. didn't even understand the industry. So I had to learn about the product. Learn I had to learn about the product. So I learned skills in sales and for the next 18 months, every single week, because I had a full-time job, I had a big team as well. So this is 15 hours a week. You said, how many hours a week were you doing this? 50, 50, 50. 50. So 50 hours plus 40 hours working, 90 hours a week. So I was working literally 13, 14 hour days for 18 months straight, non-stop, did not take a break. You see, you keep saying, watch your heart. <laughs> so in that moment, so I was very focused. Yeah. So I had kids as well, but then I had kids like one and a half year old and three and a half, right? So I spoke to my wife, I was like, look, for me to be able to do this, you need to help a little bit, like, you know, I need your help. So she was very supportive, right? So you know, in Australia, the culture is weekends, we go to the park. Yeah. So in my job, Monday to Friday, I started closing sales every single day, Monday to Friday, 8.30 p.m. at night to 12 a.m. So I was taking sales from the U.S., sales from the, the Europe region, uh, looking at the different yeah. time zones, that's what I was doing. Eventually, I started taking some time off work. Fridays, I was closing sales. Full Saturday, I was closing sales. Full Sunday, I was closing sales. What it impacted was, 
I could go to the park with my kids. So I was telling Preeti that, hey, you know what, during this time, you know, you take the kids to the park. Mm. And she's like, don't worry about it. I'll do everything. The house, everything, you just close yourself. So that's how I was able to do 13, 14 hours. So you realized while you are doing this that, that you weren't just making money off the sales. This is, you literally earned experiences, gained. Yes. Yeah. So in this process, I took over, I was doing 50 sales calls a week. So in the month of, in 18 months, I did about 4,000 phone calls. Each call was about an hour to an hour and a half. So who talks to you for that long? The, you know, the products I'm, I'm closing is 2,000 US dollars plus. So I was closing sales on the phone anywhere from 2,000 to 15,000 dollars per sale. And in that 18 months, I closed sales over a million dollars for people. So I earned some good commission on the side as well. Yeah. And no, it didn't stop there. Because I was closing a lot of good sales, the community that I was part of, I started sharing a lot of what I was doing ah. as well. And so who was this community? So it, it's a it's called a high ticket closing community, right? So I learned it from one of my mentors, his name is Dan Locke. And it's a high ticket closing community. By learning a skill, you don't get good. By learning, I implement it so that I got experience. And when I started sharing, I started anchoring that knowledge in my mind. So I got my own techniques coming out. And in that process, in September 2019, I was nominated to be the sales closer of the year. So I went to Canada. What year was it, sorry? 2019, September. 2019, September. Yeah. Sales person of the year for what? So I was closing, so this is a community of, of sales. In this community? In is this it an online community? It's all online. The 6,500 people across 151 countries. Wow. So what happened is from, from me not knowing sales at all, I focused, I closed over a million dollars, took over 4,000 phone calls, easily, you know, a few thousand hours. Right, six, seven K hours. I got nominated. Five people were nominated. I had to fly to Canada, give a speech in front of fifteen hundred people, which I'd never done in my life. And in in the moment of giving that speech, the audience will select, hey, out of these five people, we select the winner. So there's fifteen hundred people. I gave a speech for the first time in my life, and forty six percent of the audience voted for me and I came number one. Wow. So I won the sales champion in twenty nineteen across 151 countries. So the wait, 151? I got 51. 151 Jesus, countries. Wait, wait. <laughs> wow. 46 percent of the audience. And, and that was a moment where I won the sales uh, closer of the year. The first person ever in Thailand to ever win that. In fact, is the first person across Australia, Asia, Europe, South America. No. Yes. So North America, some of you Europe too. Europe as well. What? Yeah. So North America, someone's won it before me, but I was the first person across the other continent. Oh. So that started, that that shifted my yeah. mind. So you just switched from a student to a teacher immediately. <laughs> I was still a student. Yeah, but now you had Gravitas, so people coming to you, I presume. Right? Yeah, but it didn't, it didn't start that way. So in 2018, when I was learning all these sales, right, what made it really good is I understood that sales is not just about selling. Sales is actually about people relationship, people connection. So I applied these sales techniques while I was still in my job between, you know, 2018, yeah. 2019. I had a big team. I started integrating those sales techniques mm. within my team, which made me a better leader, which made me understand them better. Anything that I had to influence my team got better. Because at the end of the day, now sales at the end is people, people relationship, people connection. So when I'm managing up to all the C-suites, my connection with people got better. My relationship got better. And I was, that was the moment I realized that I've always been in sales. Sales is all about people relationship. Really? I hate sales. Wow. When I understood that, I'm like, this is it. In 2019, December, I quit my job. And I started my business. Oh, a bit awkward with the pandemic around the corner. That's the next story. <laughs> I didn't know it was coming, so I'm like, no. this is it. So I told my wife, you know what? We've transitioned out of side of business. Let me start a business. Let's take a break. So January 2020, we took a break. I came to Thailand, visited my parents for a month. I went to Singapore. And because I gained a lot of authority in sales by then, I was in Singapore. There was a, there was a company that teaches people how to speak. I ended up going there. Like a Toastmaster? It, it was another company, uh, something like Toastmasters. But I went there and they were selling these programs to, for people to come and learn how to speak. So I went there as a volunteer and I ended up training their internal team on how to sell. So I was like, hey, this is something I could actually do. But yeah. no, this is actually not bad. 
So I came back in the month of uh, Jan, went back to Australia in Feb. I'm like, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna teach people how to sell. I'm gonna run live events. But as soon as I reached Australia, the world closed down. Yeah. So out of the, how did they say, out of the frying pan into the fire, uh, right? Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I've already made a decision. I've already quit my uh, job. I'm in my own business. So I started my business. In so just a quick question, personal. Do you think you would have lost your job had you stayed there anyway? No. With the pandemic now? No. Okay. Because IT was booming. Everything is online, oh, okay. you know. With the world moving in this, if you're in IT, you're pretty safe, but you got to be good as well. So I started my business. I was like, okay, now what do I do? I'm like, I'm going to pivot now. I'm going to move online. I've never done online before, right? Mm. So let me try. So the first year 2020 was absolutely terrifying, very tough. Played a lot on my, what do you say, self-doubt. You know, because the mindset for, for far too long, 15 years, I've been in a job, right? Yeah. You know? And then when you come and become your own boss, things kick in. Because before I was getting a salary, I could take a sick leave, money would still come in. Now, from what I was getting to zero. And a pandemic on top of it. So that actually hit, uh, that actually hit quite hard. And yeah. then 2020, what happened was a lot of self-doubt, a lot of self-doubt, you know, the mindset, a lot of moments, uh, you know, with my wife as well. I, I don't know if I can actually do this. A lot of teary moments, crying moments, because now the, I was the only bread earner at the time. So my wife was full time looking after the kids, right? So I had now all of a sudden uh, no income. It's like four people would be no like what to do. So of course I had some savings because of the sales. Uh, but I'm like the savings will finish if I, we don't we don't do some sales. So I, I I got some coaching. So I went back as a student. I said, look, I've never done business. I've done sales. Great. Let me get some business coaching. So I got a coach uh, helping me. I was very focused. I grew really fast. And then something happened. It was in May 2020. The coach actually said to me that you're growing really fast. If I knew you were growing this fast, I would not have taken you as a student because now I see you as a competitor. Oh. So I was a little bit, I sort of broke down a little bit at that time when he said that because it was a trust that I had yeah. that got shattered. Yeah. Oh, oh, they didn't say it's a sweet joke. No, no. Oh, that's not nice. No, no. So I had a one-on-one -on -one with him and, and he was like, look, I can't help you more. Do this, uh, you can go on this way. Then. So I, it I sounds like he shouldn't have that job. I'm sorry, though that yeah. I kind of attitude. You yeah. shouldn't be coaching people. Yeah, if you're looking uh, at the competition. Yeah. That's terrible. So it, it broke me down for yeah. a while. So it was in the month of May and uh, there was a lot of trust that was broken down. I had a lot of teary moments. I cried a lot and I spoke to my wife. She's like, Hey man, if he says this, it means there must be something good in you. Exactly. But I didn't hear what she said. You know, she just said it as long as it took me a few months to get over that feeling. Took That's awful months. that your coach actually destroyed you rather than building you up. It, it, that is it, shocking. Yeah. It actually took me a few months. Yeah. So it was almost back in November. So I was talking to my parents all this time that, you know, can I do it? Can I not do it? Um, is this a good thing? And did I make the right decision? You know, I don't know. There's so many things, you know, it was, it, it was a lot of self-doubt. It was a lot of, it was a lot of uh, responsibility on the shoulder as well. And kids were still small that time, right? They were, I think, I think they were about three and a half, four and a half that time, right? And, and I was like, you know what? I don't know if I can do it. I said, let me just go ahead. And my parents just said, look, just, you made a decision go and then after that I said, okay, let me just go in. So the first year 2020 was, was actually really, really tough. I didn't make much money. I used up all the savings. Mm -hmm. um, in November 2020, what happened at that time was I found a new coach and I was like, you know what, let me just refresh, let me just do it again. So 2021 came, I was a whole new person. That whole, you know, I spoke to you earlier about emotional management. In a job, emotional management during crisis was one aspect. What 2020 taught me about is when you're in business, there will be a lot of low moments. If you can actually manage your emotion during that low moments, you will be able to think straight. And when you can think straight, you can help your clients. Your team will also be able to think straight. That was a big lesson I learned that time. You know, so it made me very powerful. It made me very strong on the inside because now I've been through my lowest time. Mm. I've been through stuff that, you know, I don't know if, uh, how many people would have gone through, but personally, I had never gone through that. So in well, 20... good that you did, right? Yeah. And in 2020, I started a, a new market. I'm like, let me just try a new market. I started, where do I start? Where do I start? Which yeah, market, yeah, yeah. Which market yeah. do I go? So at that time I was in Australia. I'm like, let me run ads. Hey man, Australia ads are a little bit expensive. Funds are running a bit low. So I started the market in India online. What market? What are you selling? I was now teaching people how to sell. Mm -hmm. So I said, where do I start? So I learned sales. There are people like me that might want to actually learn how to do sales. 
So I went out and I started teaching people how to do sales on the phone. So that people would find you online, but yeah. say to me how it would work. So how it worked is, so I started first with what do I do as a business? I said I will teach people what I went through in a job, if they want to transition, learn the skill of closing sales on the phone. Mm. So I started doing events online. Sorry, just let me get some um, background. Yeah. So at this point, what, what presence did you have on social media? Zero. 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 So how did you kickstart all this? So all this I kickstarted was, I started making content on my Instagram content. I had a YouTube channel which I started as well, you know. Yeah. But, but the biggest way on how to find leads that comes to me is I just ran Facebook ads. So I said, which market do I run? Where, where do I run Facebook ads? India, because it wasn't as expensive to run. Yeah. So I ran Facebook ads in India. So then people would then contact you and then call for a fee for a lesson. Yeah, so the process that I went through, I ran the Facebook ad and I ran the webinar online mm -hmm. Zoom for about three hours, four hours, where they could come listen to me about why is learning sales important for you? What can it do for you? And at the end of that webinar, I said, if you want to learn further, come join me. And I used to pitch my fees. And then when I did that, people started joining up. Right? I did many, many, many webinars. I was doing a webinar once a week. But that's perfect for the yeah. pandemic, right? Yeah, so I pivoted. Yeah. Previously, I was thinking that I'll start my business and I'll do in-person events. Because of the, uh, yeah. the pandemic, I went online. I ran a lot of Zoom. Yeah. At that time, Zoom wasn't as popular in pandemic, it just shot up. Yeah, right? absolutely. So I did a lot of Zoom events, Zoom meetings, Zoom webinars. Mm. Uh, each time when I did a Zoom event, uh, there was like 50 to 100 people mm. in the room. And they would pay for this? So it was free first when I started, just to gather the audience. Mm -hmm. And it was a three hour webinar. After the three hour webinar, I used to pitch my program that I will help you for eight weeks, 12 weeks. And I used right. to, I, they used to pay for that. Yeah. That's how I found my clients. Right. So then, once they join your programs, how did you turn it into? I know you're getting yeah, yeah, yeah. well yeah. So what happened that time is now they found my program. So I'm like everything I will do is on Zoom. So we will come once a week at a particular time on Zoom, and I will teach you. And whatever I teach you is recorded. You can go watch it again. And if you need help, we are in a private Facebook group. You can ask me questions there. I'll help you there. That's what I did for the next year in 2021. I only did that. I only taught people how to sell because that's what I knew how to do. So I did not teach anything what I did not know how to do. I just thought that, hey, I was in a job. I'm learning sales. You learn what I did. So I taught everything from what I, my experience that I did. Mm. So yeah. the people I was attracting were people that wanted to learn sales as sales professionals, sales people. That was for the first year. So my business in the first year grew by almost 600%, right? So I was like, hey, this is really good. But then I didn't want to stay where I was because the people that I was teaching were only sales professionals. And I wanted to teach people how to build a business. But at that point, I didn't have a business myself. So I could not teach people how to build a business. So that's when I started with, let me teach people how to sell. By teaching people how to sell, I build my business. <laughs> okay. I realized that I want to work with business people because my heart was in business and, and by that time I discovered a new purpose. I said I want to teach people how to build a business so that number one, they can achieve their financial success and number two, they can give back to their family and number three, they can give back to community. It has to be in this sequence. You cannot give to someone else unless you give to yourself first. So be financially stable first, give back to your family, when yourself and your family is taken care of, then you can give from an abundance to community. So that's how I found my new purpose. And now I'm like, I'm gonna teach people how to build a purpose. Now I've got this. So then in the meantime, people started asking me, hey, can you show me how to build a business? So the market that I chose, the people that I chose to, to help, was not any random people having a mm -hmm. business. It was mainly people who wanted to actually build a business of teaching someone. So there were a lot of these coaches, consultants mm -hmm. online that were right. using their experience, their knowledge to teach someone else. So I said, I'll show you what I did. You can go do the same thing for yourself. So you're teaching gurus. 
He's a guru teaching guru. So I, I ended up doing that a lot. Yeah. Right. So, but where I led my strength was always from sales. Yeah. I said, the, before you get any leads, before you do any marketing, you learn how to do sales first. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know sales and the lead comes in and you can't close, they'll go to someone else and they'll never come back mm -hmm. to you. So the, the thing that, that I arrived at is you want to learn sales because you want to stay ready. Yeah. Because when you are ready, you don't have to get ready. So stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So yeah. when the opportunity strikes, you can close the sale. Yeah. So I enjoy doing that. So I started showing people how to transition out of their job and build their own coaching and consulting business. So I did that for a long time, for about maybe a year or two, I started doing that. It was this? Um, in 2021, 2020. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying, I think that this is actually such a good time in Did that become a thing? So Forbes today, yeah. you know, Forbes magazine, they have predicted this business to be, today it's a $365 million uh, business. They're predicting How much, much, much? 365 million. Yeah. yeah. They're predicting it to be a $365 billion business. So what? It, so today, per day, we are doing, I, I win. Uh, 2026 or 2027. Uh, okay. Just double check that online. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can just Google it. Yeah, I will. But uh, uh, wait. So this is business of coaching or sales? Or educational business. business. They, Edu it comes under educational business, right? So they're predicting by the year 2025 yeah. or 26, yeah. uh, it's going to be a 365 yeah. billion dollar business every year. Exactly. And today it's roughly around a billion or two. That's mm -hmm. it. The online educational business. I'll Google that. Yeah, just Google that. And so I started talking about this while I was telling people and teaching people basically pretty much what I did. I just shared what I did uh -huh. because then my success motto from before is you learn something, you implement, and then you share what you learn. You learn, implement, share, learn, implement, share. When you learn, implement, share, you will tweak it. You will grow to the next level. Yeah. Right. So I came up with this new uh, new motto, which I call the listen formula, right? You learn, implement, share, then you teach it, and then you enhance it. Because when you teach, you learn new stuff as well. Yeah. And then you move to the next lesson, the uh, next level. So listen, learn, implement, share, teach, enhance, next level. Okay. So that's how I sort of said, hey man, if you want to grow in life, just listen. It's really nice, as simple. Nice, nice. It's yeah. really as simple as that. Now, when I started mentoring people how to build their own business, the next level came up. Businesses started coming to me and saying that, can you show us, can you come in and show us how to build a sales team? Because what I was teaching people was learning sales, doing sales inbound, where people leads coming to you. Outbound is how you reach out to people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And number three is how do you retain clients? So inbound, outbound, client retention three areas. Mm -hmm. So in this process, businesses started coming to me and says, hey, can you help us with this? That's when in the year 2022, mm -hmm. towards the end, I started entering into business consulting. Now I'm consulting businesses, how to build sales team, how to train sales team, how to work through the processes, build your processes. So then I signed up a client in Australia, more in the health space, autistic area, autistic. Uh, how do you jump around industry so seriously? So it, it is the key here is what I found. A very good question. What I found is it's not so much the industry because if you look at the foundation of sales, it's people connection. So in the process that I started teaching sales, so I share a little bit about my sales framework that will help you a little bit. Is the framework I teach is called Care, Connect, Convert. It starts with care. So everybody knows you're going to be in front of them to sell them something. Mm -hmm. So don't start by selling. Mm. You start by caring. And caring is people have questions in their mind, right? I got this, I got that. So you sit and listen to the questions and you answer the question and then they will feel, hey, this person really is actually showing care for me. Mm -hmm. Once you show that care, then you go to the connect phase where you talk about their problem. Hey, what problem you got? What result you want? And hey, you know what, your problem, your result, I can help you, that's my solution. So that's the connect phase. Yeah. And I call this the, the formula here is the PRS, problem, result, solution. What people do wrong is they talk about their solution first. It turns off people. So it comes to the connect. And then the third phase, the client then realizes, oh, you know my problem really well. You know that uh, your results, and now you can help me as well. 
let's talk about business. And then the convert actually happens mm-hmm. where they now say, oh, I got this objection, I got that objection. Then you handle the objection. Mm-hmm. And then the sale just happens. You make it sound so easy. It's actually a very really simple formula. It's like when you go to a doctor, right? Why do you go to a doctor? If you have a, let's say you got a headache. What's your problem? My problem is headache. Hey doctor, the result I want is make my headache go away. And the doctor will then give you a medicine. That's the solution. You would not visit a doctor if you don't have a headache. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you go to the doctor, the doctor will, will, will first sit down and talk to you, right? What do you have? What's your problem? They won't just say, hey, you go, there's an injection. Let me give you an injection of years of pill. That comes last. Mm-hmm. So we visit doctors every day. Every, if we just use that simple psychology there, it's really people connection. So that's how to answer your question is jumping industry. Industry is it's agnostic. If you come down to the basic, it's really just that. It's people connection, mm-hmm. understanding people. If you show care for someone, you'll connect. And if you connect, the sale will happen. Yeah. So the three C's, care, connect, convert. Okay. That's to answer your question, how I jump yeah. industries. So coming back to the story of consulting, right? So this, this client that I got, uh, mainly in the autistic space, uh, helping parents now learn how to sort of navigate their child, learning the skills of, you know, uh, how to empower the parents to, to work with their kids independently. So I go in and I look at the sales team. I'm like, okay, let's show some care to the parents. Let's connect with them first before we tell them, come join our program. So I started building the outbound sales team, the inbound sales team, really looking at the, the client retention team. Now, how did I come to all this? Is You remember when I was in a job? Mm-hmm. I was managing a team. Mm-hmm. So I used those skills. I was managing upwards. I used the stakeholder management in sales. All the conflict management, all the emotional management. That is an experience that builds you up to today. So the mantra that I came with and and, you know the the whole concept that I have is your previous experience, whether it's good or bad, it's just an experience that leads you up to where you are today. Don't throw away your experience. So there's a concept that people say, forgive and forget, right? Mm. You can forgive people, but don't forget it because that when you plan your experience, Mm -hmm. you want to leverage that in your life. So everything that happened to me in the past, it's an experience that I bring on today to work with teams now because I've built a lot of teams, I've built processes. So that led me to business consulting. Because what I was doing in my job previously, and what I did in my business, at the end of the day, I'm just sitting and talking to a client, which is, you can call it coaching, you mm-hmm. can call it mentoring, you can call it consulting, sales. <laughs> you can call it sales, but at the end of the day, you have a problem, I solve it. Mm-hmm. You can call it whatever you want. If someone has a problem and you know how to solve it, you're in demand. Along this way, I also figured out a few things, right? My wife has been on the journey with me. Health was real because I, I was working really long hours and thinking. I told you, right? 13, 14 hours. Yeah. I've had days that I've been working 17 hours. In fact, a few months ago, I worked 23 hours straight nonstop. It's not sustainable. No. You know? But the, the point here is when you're working long hours, you need to take care of your health as well. You need to take care of your family as well. So there are three things that really comes out. It's really the, the financial aspect. Yeah. It's the relationship aspect and it's the health aspect. So I started taking care of myself in those three areas. Started eating better, you know, always bringing my partner on the journey, bringing my kids on the journey. In fact, you, you ask my kids now, they're like six and eight. And if you tell them when you grow, what do you want to do? They'll say, read book, take action, make money. Someone's been brainwashed in the kids. <laughs> so, and, and the six and eight, and we make it a joke, you know, we yeah. dance around, you know, and then, and then the next thing is after money, what do you want to do? One of the persons says, one of my daughters says, I want to be a teacher. One of the daughters, she's still young, I'll buy lots of toys. So, you know, it's that having that fun element. Yeah. Now, when I looked at this, right, I'm like, life is beyond just this. Yeah. This is when you have money, when you have a good relationship, when you give, you have good health. You can now do a lot for other people as mm-hmm. well. You've taken care of your basic primary needs. And when you are doing something beyond yourself and you've got all this, this is true wealth. This is true wealth. Wealth is beyond just money. So that's when I formed my company and the business name is this Wealth on Command. How can you now create wealth on command? That's a pretty big commitment. Yes. So I'm writing a book called Wealth on Command. How do you take control in your life that you can actually create wealth on command? You can get your financial success, at the same time look after your family, 
and give back to community. So three things. And the journey continues. So I'm currently in the process of writing this book called Wealth on Command. And frankly, that's just come from your parents, right? I mean, that's what they've been doing all their lives, right? Hundred percent. So everything that you learn, as we just said, experience, it is the people you meet, the friends, the family, the parents you have, what have you learned, the schools you've been, the experience, the good times, the low times, you know, all that has led to this concept, Wealth on Command. Yeah. And now, last year, 2022, in 2022, June, while I was doing the consulting aspect, right, a new market opened up, which is in Thailand. So now someone comes to me in Thailand and says, hey, you, you've done a lot of these good sales. Can you come and train my team in business to business sales? You know, they do a lot of B2B sales. Right? Yeah. Can you come and train me? I'm like, okay, but here's the challenge, right? I have never trained in Thai. So I've grown up in Thailand. I speak yeah. Thai really well. I'm very fluent in that. But when it comes to training in, in, in a corporate, the language is slightly I different. I couldn't do that. You know? Yeah. The language. So I was like, now, now you see, there's, there's this new thing that kicks in my mind. Can I do it? Yeah. Can I do it? But there's another thing that I have learned that I'm growing. With every level, there is a new level. So yeah. this new level that I'm coming to come to Thailand, this thing in my mind, can I actually help people when I speak mainly in English? This person said, yeah, let's try it. I said, look, what I'll do is I will just be myself. I'll speak Thai, I'll mix a few words in English, and you see how it goes. And when I did that, they loved it. Mm. Because now it's a very unique factor. So the people that I started training in Thailand is they looked at it more as an international person coming to Thailand, bringing international experience, bringing stuff that is not available in Thailand, and I'm training and I'm mentoring them. And what I discovered was, as long as you are authentic, as long as you show care, people can feel it. You know, people can feel that care factor. They felt it. And I was like, hey, this is actually not bad. Mm. I'm actually really enjoying this. Mm. So I, I did this over Zoom while I was in Australia there in Thailand. I'm doing it over Zoom. We did this for a few months. I think four or five months it went on. Mm -hmm. And then this person who brought me in Thailand, he said, hey, this is really good. My company is actually becoming better in sales. And I was teaching them outbound B2B. They said, I want to promote you in Thailand. So it was in 2022, towards the end of the year. We did an, I did an event in Thailand. Mm -hmm. My first live event, nice. not only in Thailand, it was my first yeah. live ah. in-person event ever in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because remember when I started, it was yes. the pandemic period. Of course. By 2022, the world opened up, started opening up. So I did my first live event. When was it? It was in, um, it was in a hotel, no hotel, uh, Patunam. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I did there uh, and my first event, not a very big event, there was like only six or six businesses that came in, mm -hmm. right? Small event, my first event, two day, uh, a two day event, fantastic event. It went really yeah. beautifully and I signed up my first consulting client. Oh, so what does that mean? Let's get to that. Okay. Because what does it mean to be a consultant? You know, what, what do you what do you want people to get from you? Okay. Tell me how you work. So now, by that time that I started doing, I did my first consulting client, and I said, what I will help you with is I will help you train your sales team, right? I will help you train your sales team. Plus, I will actually work with you on the vision of your company, the strategy of your company, on how to actually get better lead quality, how to close more sales, and how to retain clients. It started with that. And I said, look, you're my first client. Yeah. You know, what I will do here is we'll catch up weekly. What kind of industry was that? That was in the solar cell, you know, uh, yeah. building solar, yeah. uh, putting solar panels on people's yeah. house. I'm like, hey, the industry is good as well. And I was industry agnostic. So the way I started is I went broad. Don't worry, I want to enter the market. Let me get as many industries. Yeah. Right? Because all sales is all about people connection. Yeah. So I got a solar cell company, my first client. And we did a test run for about six months. And in that six months, I reduced his marketing expense by 50%. So he had four salespeople. One of them, the lowest person, was making 100,000 baht a month in sales. In one month, he made a million baht in sales. Wow. So the client was extremely happy. The lowest salesperson, the more junior, yeah. went from making 100,000 baht in sales in one month yeah. to 1 million baht. The clients, what do you say, the, the sales are shot. Yeah. He was like, hey, this is really good. I want to actually now go on for longer. So I signed him up for another one year. And in this process, a new vision developed. It's a vision I had not seen before. Because now I've gone to the next level. I'm like, 
now all the flashback of you know my parents you know uh, what they went through the the 1997 asian financial crisis the 2008 global financial crisis uh, the 2020 incident that you know i i went really low moment yeah uh, you know me and my wife all that just came back and i was like you know this is my time to give back so i developed a new vision that for the entrepreneurs in thailand I want to be able to help 100 entrepreneurs generate at least a hundred million baht within three years. So you wanted to help, sorry, what? what? I wanted to help Thai entrepreneurs, yeah. people in Thailand, 100, 100 people. 100 people. 100 Thai entrepreneurs generate a hundred million baht in revenue in their business within three years. So I take hundred million, multiply by hundred entrepreneurs, that is 10 billion. So I came up with a vision vision tender. <laughs> you really do set your targets, okay? So that is my vision now for the entrepreneurs in Thailand that I want to help 100 entrepreneurs make 100 million over three years. The clients that I accept today, they are making already 30 million a year, you know? So they're already at a particular level, helping them. So if you convert three, $100 million to US dollar, it's about $3 million roughly, yeah. right? Over three years, that's a target we can do. So now. That's how I set this target. I started signing up one, then I signed up the second. Now I've got about five clients here in, in Thailand that we're, that we're working on on that one. So it, one thing led to another to another. And now uh, 2023 is when I, I went big. I did my second event in Thailand in the month of uh, October. So I got, uh, now these are more clients that came in. I did the same thing. Now I revised my vision, the purpose. Mm -hmm. So when I started sales, I was like, hey, I'll help you quit your job, uh, do sales. For the business here, the problem that they have is a lot of business entrepreneurs in Thailand, they're doing great, mm -hmm. but they're stuck in the business. If they take some time off, the business doesn't work. Or they have a team that they can't rely on. Yeah, can't let go, can't rely on the team, hold on Correct. to tight. Yeah. And I, I did not know that before, but, Such a problem, but right? when I started consulting, I discovered that. Yeah. And the problem I found that they have, the reason they have that is they don't have proper processes. They don't have proper systems because everything they do is in their head. If they go on a holiday, they're bombarded with phone calls. If they go anywhere, they're bombarded with text messages. Okay, now what, now what, now what, now what? So I revised the vision. I said, I want to help a hundred entrepreneurs, right? Be able to actually exit their business. Exit their business four areas, four ways. Number one, Hey, I've, I've, I've got a business now, I just sell it off. That's the first way to exit. Second way is I want to go IPO, stock market, right? Third way of exiting is I take this business and I give my grandkids or, or, or my kids. The fourth is what I'm really focusing on at the moment is having a team in your place that can do the entire business for you while you can actually have the freedom of time. While you have the freedom of time and you can meet someone else, do other things. Yes. So the fourth way of exiting is having a management team that does your business for you. And true business is if the business owner steps aside, the business should still continue. That's really where I'm helping a lot now. Is helping building processes and systems so that your team can take care of your business. Okay, so tell me practically how yeah. it works. Let's say me, City Life, yeah. I'm like, right, help. Yes. How do we start? Where do we go? What do you do? Okay, so the first aspect is, uh, of course, looking at pretty much where the problems is in your business, where your bottlenecks are. So you do this physically, you yourself? On, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go right into now, the businesses. Right now, yes, exactly. Right now. I, I want to see how practically it works. Like, how much time do you spend in there? Like, so it's all on, everything I do is on Zoom. So I oh, can, okay. Everything right. is on Zoom, right? So I. that's what I want to keep is we want to be able to be on Zoom. The mindset of a lot is, hey, come internally. Right. That's the first step I want to change, is business can happen online as well. If you're stuck with, I want to do face-to-face, -face, you will never be able to come out of the business. Mm. So I start with, let's do everything online, right? You as the business owner, let me first understand. So I, gotta, I, I take them through a process. The process is this, right? Is we'll catch up, I'll do a, a personalized strategy for you. The personalized strategy is let me understand your problems, whatever your problem is. So is it just through conversation with owners? Like how do you actually understand the business? It's a conversation with the owner. It is the, if, if the owner cannot tell me what the problem is, the owner does not know the business. Yeah. And they can tell me the problem. The challenging part is telling me what the results they want. 
a lot of people can't tell me what they want. So I just start with tell me what you don't want. Yeah. And then I just do the opposite. What do you mean they can't tell me what they want? Show me people know what they want. Not all. Because when you talk to people, you'll be surprised when you tell people, hey, tell me what you want. They'll be like, oh, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like that. Huh. They're telling you stuff they don't want. Yeah. So now I just convert that into what they want. So a lot of businesses talk in terms of what they don't want because they, they talk about their frustration. Yes. I don't want this. I don't want this. But I want to shift their mindset to say, instead of focusing on what you don't want, let's focus on what you want. Yeah. Because what you focus on, your energy goes there, you get what you want. Yeah. So that's how the conversation starts. So I look at the problem, I look at the results, what they want, and I always start with where my strength is. My strength is, is in building sales team, managing sales team, looking at the sales process. We start with that. So I start with my strengths, which takes on to other areas as well. And, and surely your IT background is gonna help streamline many, many things. The systems right? will, correct. Yeah. But if you go, if you go, if you start with, let's look at IT, a lot of business owners, they're like, IT is too complicated for me, I don't understand. And then they shut off. But when you talk sales, everybody wants sales. When you talk business growth, everybody wants that. So let's start with where my strength is. So from a practical perspective, the first conversation is generally around, you know, where your problem is, what is the result you want, and then I create a personalized plan for you. This is what you need to do immediately in the next, right now, or in the next 90 days. So a first three months plan, then three to six, and then six to 12, a step-by-step -step guidance. Because a lot of people, a lot of business owners, what I found is they're multitasking. Today I gotta to do this, tomorrow I gotta to do this, and they're switching all the time. What happens is, as a business owner, you may be able to switch but your team cannot sit switch as fast as you. So what tends to happen is, because there's a the psychology here, if I can share a little bit here, is the reason the business owner set up the business in the first place is there is a deep purpose they've set up with. There's a desire, there's a focus. They move really fast, they've got experience, they've learned stuff, whatever they've done to get them to open the business. Now they've hired someone, they drive, so if you look at this visual, when they hire someone, they're on the same team. This is the team member, this is the business owner. The business owner has a purpose inside that they grow real fast. But you see, the team is still the same. The gap between the high end and the low end, there's a gap. Mm. That's the problem where they eventually say, oh, my team member was really good in the beginning and today I, they're not that great. I don't have good people. It's not because they don't have good people if they've not really invested in growing their people. So I look at all those aspects.